Namaskar. Today we are going to talk about intelligence and when I start to talk about this topic, I think it has become a very common word for every lay person to use it, IQ, intelligence, this comes very commonly to common man as well as psychologists or intelligence researchers also. One of the common explanations that we hear is use your intelligence, you know parents tell children, also teachers they sometimes you know check about that, don't you have intelligence is another question that is usually asked. Do we realize that generally we are able to see how much we differ from each other, in fact even children are able to see these differences in height, in weight, in color that is skin color, hair color also and other pronounced differences they become very common for children also they can see it. As we grow up into adulthood we become capable of understanding and recognizing differences among individuals in intellect through various performances this can be seen. Also differences in emotions through expressions of our feelings and social abilities and judgments. Today terms like IQ that is intelligence quotient, EQ emotional quotient, SQ social quotient they are discussed and commonly used. In fact you will hear this in any uh, place you know not just in academic places but in any place you can be uh, very familiar using these terms. What I would like to say is that people have different levels of intelligence. Intelligence is the capacity to learn and use information. Psychologists in the field of intelligence traditionally focused on measurements of intellectual differences, individual differences using various tests. Their aim was to develop practical guidelines for predicting what can be expected of individuals. Intelligence in fact is more difficult to measure compared to for example stature. A person's performance on an intelligence test may be momentarily altered you know by external factors such as amount of sleep the person has had, whether he or she has eaten a good meal before the test and so on. So many factors can influence. There are several questions like does intelligence vary at all or does it remain fixed throughout life? If it changes can it do so within a week, a month, a year or 10 years? If it changes can we determine all the factors that produce the change? These are questions that psychologists would like to answer and answers like this will require measurement of intelligence. So this is the reason why we have tests on intelligence. Modern intelligence tests are usually found to be highly reliable. We do have some good tests today. There are basically two kinds of tests, achievement tests which are designed to measure a person's current knowledge and skills and we also have aptitude tests which try to predict capacity or future performance in an individual, in a person. It was early testing that popularized the concept of IQ, intelligence quotient. There are several features that may interest you and I would like to share this today. The concept of mental age you know in IQ calculation was introduced as research showed that mental abilities of children increased with age. Modern researchers are now beginning to understand what happens to intelligence in adulthood and old age. I think this is something that is also becoming a big concern with old people not being the same you know when they were younger. We need to understand that education and experience may contribute to changes, changes in the intellectual capacity. Recently the use of one overall IQ score to represent intellectual changes with age has been criticized. Researchers for example argue that declining scores for 
older adults represent only one aspect of intelligence. So, here what they brought in was aspects of intelligence called fluid intelligence and crystallized intelligence. So, now you know this is something that we are learning about today. Fluid intelligence is the general mental skills like for example, the ability to make inferences that can start to decline at 40 years. Now, we are able to make inferences when we are in the prime that is 20 years, 30 years and all that. Now, when 40 years and later as we grow older, what generally happens is it is because of a decline in our neurological functioning. This decline can also be due to reduced practice of a certain mental skill. Like for example, in a family, let us take a child who is probably studying in the 5th or 6th standard. The child will use several aspects of you know intellectual skills in performing let us say mathematical abilities, let us say in learning uh, you know new vocabulary in science and um, uh, English and father who has not been practicing these skills you will find that comparatively the father is not able to remember as much. So, we are able to see that there is some amount of a decline when the father says yes I know I had read it before but now the child is able to remember because it is constantly being practiced you know there is so much of link between one year and the other year of studies that is going on in this young boy. So, this is what I meant when I was trying to explain that with certain decline in age we have this intellectual capacity fluid intelligence that will reduce. So, there is another aspect of intelligence that steadily increases with age. This is an ever improving aspect called crystallized intelligence. This is specific mental skills like for example, one's vocabulary or the ability to define words. This depends on exposure to required environment. Here for example, when we will compare the vocabulary, the language usage of an adult and a young child, we can definitely understand that a young child will have less number of words, the vocabulary will be much lesser compared to an adult. So, this is how we understand that crystallized intelligence actually begins to increase and increase and increase as we grow up thanks to a whole lot of extra up.